So you know this is in a Steve report? I know. <laughs> What's the difference? I'll do it as Steve. How is it going then? Very well, thank you. <laughs> Once had to explain to the police why I had two coffins in the back of my van. <laughs> Oh, our time is up. Our t Listen, I think he's done you again. Hasn't he's he? done us again. You really gave it everything. <laughs> it's losing oh. by because Stevie's over the moon. <laughs> I'm not. I'm Surely not embarrassed. Three. <laughs> <laughs> he's just embarrassed. <laughs> he's just embarrassed he's just... at how clever he is. <laughs> no, I'm not getting anything now. Um, imagine I'm the police. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you got two coffins in the back of your van, sir? Um, well, I was doing a touring play at the time, mm -hmm. and there was vampires in it. Yeah. Oh. So um, we had two coffins in, in the back of the van as, as props. And um, we were actually in Germany doing this play called Neighbours with Long Teeth. <laughs> and um... let's, let's talk about Inside Number Nine. I think people, some people might be interested in this show. Uh, and the last... is, hang, hang on, is this not the, the, the fantasy restaurant one? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> they should have got you. Oh, for God's yeah. sake. They could have I had it all planned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on then. Unbeknownst to us, the, um, the head of the Deutsche Bank had just been assassinated. <laughs> In Frankfurt. <laughs> right. And they were stopping everyone. And so they were pulling over basically all vans. They were looking for an anything dodgy, basically, I guess. And uh, there was a great sort of vista and there was a fire, special effects fire, and I said, Therese, we're making a television programme. And I couldn't believe it, you know, I couldn't believe all these people were, were there for it. And that seems now <laughs> positively you know, simple by comparison, because there we were in this wrecked, ruined church with flames. Right. Where were you? Which city? Um, it was just outside uh, Frankfurt. I live there. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> so they pulled you over. Machine guns, oh. everything. Very, very serious situation. Yeah. And we had to explain the plot of our play, Neighbours <laughs> with Long Teeth. Um, we should just go on and restart the course entirely. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was your job, wasn't it? Yeah. Being on restarts. In fact, God, you did, because otherwise we'd never have Pauline Yamble Jones. Yes. Pokey, pokey, pig in a pokey! Get the lipstick on with the whole thing. Don't worry, I will. This is back in the olden days, 1989. And um, so I used to go and ring my mum from a phone box. And she said, oh, my God, Stephen, thank God you've rung. You got that job in Germany. <laughs> and he wants, he wants you to ring him back, but he's, he can't get in touch with you. She speaks like that. Mum. Yeah, good. <laughs> Describe each other in one word when you first met. I'm just going to say funny for Steve, because I, I, my memory of him is on stage in Taming of the Shrew, at the back, completely pulling focus, with, I think, a limp, a beard. He's his own beard. An inhaler, glasses, a hat, a stick, all sorts. <laughs> Anything I could get my hands on. Just a funny man. Arthur um, has signed it twice, uh, once with his full name and once perhaps with his pen name. It looks like the word shame or shit. Sorry for the language. And why did Mark Gatiss not join you with the inside number nine? venues are you touring around? <laughs> Schools. Schools. <so> Schools. <laughs> the plot went that I was a sort of uh, young 17-year-old uh, schoolboy uh, who'd fallen in love with uh, my neighbour who was a vampire <laughs> and uh, she came up out of the coffin and that's where we first met. Let me ask you an emergency question. I've left my emergency question book back Okay, stage, so this is I've, a real uh, emergency. I've got some, I've got some up here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it still or sparkling water? <laughs> <laughs> and what was the other coffin for? The other coffin was for her <laughs> parents, her mum or her dad. <laughs> I think they're shared because they're a married couple, they're so allowed to. Like <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Moxie is loving this show. <laughs> it's pushed and pulled today. Mm. <laughs> we will, we will. Will we do it? Yes, we will. 
If they can rehearse and know what we're doing when we get there... Yeah! We'll be fine. People will say, it was really clever the way you had remnants of your characters on your faces as, yeah. your, as yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I didn't have time to take the microphone. We'd, we'd, already, uh, we'd already used up happy endings with the League of Gentlemen, really, with my character Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> my character Charlie had a, a job in a massage parlour, uh, which some of you might have seen, doing happy endings, so uh, we thought we won't do that again. And... Did you print your CV off for Chris Hutchinson? Chris Hutchinson, that sounds interesting, I'd like to know more about him. 21st of February 2017, and the episode was? Yes, who said that? Which? Say it again? No one said it. <laughs> 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 you said something. You said something. You said something. Now, what was it? Here it is. Two words. Yes! I think you're very good in this part. Well, thank you very much. I do too. Okay, now. People think I'm the arrogant cunt. <laughs> I think li I'd like to get Lily Allen on, on this if you can give me. Uh, oh, she'll do it. There's one emergency question I think I'd better not ask her, though. But, uh, <laughs> but apart from that. Okay, the mind boggles. Yeah, no. Oh, she'd do it. <laughs> yeah, she'd be good. She's done off menu. Yeah, has she? Yeah. But I haven't, Richard. Uh, have I've you not? I've done this twice. That's yeah, true. You, know. you should do off menu. It's good fun. <laughs> and how did you explain all this to the police? Um, it was a lot of mime. Um... <laughs> but it's quite a complex plot. So how yeah. would you convey it to them? I think they had more things on their mind than the, the foot. <laughs> they didn't get to Act Three. So yeah. Um... <laughs> yes, at what point in your description of the story did they glaze over? <laughs> <laughs> Holy. <laughs> really is. Uh, let me just take you around the pudding bowl, my little haircut. Round the back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, go on and take the piss, and uh, okay. you'll be good. What would you? What? What? Uh, I'm not wasting what, all my ideas you, on this. They won't you, ask pop, me. Papa Dom's or bread? Which would you? Uh, less? <laughs> if I start asking that. Maybe I'll get 5,000 people in. <laughs> I lost my mother, Maureen. By which I mean, she is not with us anymore. She is dead. Not that I can't find her. Because we don't live in that big a flat. Johnson says, in several episodes, Steve gets his legs out. And they're very <laughs> totally impressive. <laughs> Does he have a specific leg work out from Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, although um, I had to do quite a bit of running in high heels as Pauline Campbell Jones. <laughs> so I think that, that was a big help. But uh, no, thank you very much. I can't look well, where have I got my legs out? I suppose the referee's a white cat. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Zanzibar. Oh, yes, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. We're filming that at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Okay. And have you taken my idea that I gave to Reese of doing one actually inside a giant number nine, like a just... <laughs> so you're all inside a number nine. I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> okay. that we've taken because that idea Because I know you I know you love to get suggestions. Now... <laughs> I'm sorry, I know he's just pulling faces at me, Steve Pemmett. He looks like something on this morning. A woman who's a nurse, and she said, I want to give you some ideas, because you do these weird dark comedies. And she said she had a patient who um, expectorated a lot, but didn't want to be bothered calling the, the you know the nurse every time. So she kept a, a jug under her bed, and when she le and she kept it in her freezer. And when she left uh, after maybe you know two months in hospital, she presented this sort of frozen phlegm. jelly of phlegm to to the nurse and said, "Yeah, I, you know." And that's what that reminds me of as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Brilliant. I think it looks nice. Thank you. <laughs>